At the pay-per-view, we were talking about the best decade ever, and everybody has agreed with me. That's, well, there's only one person who's got in touch, so but it's that person. 100% of those in touch on the subject. I agreed with you as well. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, the six million dollar man, da, 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 Steve Austin. We have the power to rebuild him. We can make him faster, stronger, and something else which I can't remember. But anyway, uh, and the bionic woman. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ford Cortinas, Rally Choppers. Yeah, Gary Curry. Thank you, Gary, for uh, that little trip down memory lane there. Right, let's go through the papers. Uh, we are joined this morning again by the psychologist Emma Kenny and the broadcaster Liz Kershaw. Welcome back to both of you. Emma, you want to start with the front of The Guardian. Uh, and this is talking about more than 10% of residents in areas of the capital have held this non-dom status that the Chancellor's wife is yeah. being uh, highlighted for today. So shall we say tax efficiency for certain populations? And the reason that this is a big issue is obviously when you have multi-millionaires paying less tax as far as percentage-wise, than people who are earning £30,000. That's what we're talking about. And I think the provoking of this anger is because people feel that the government and those who are inhabiting positions within the government are massively out of touch with what's happening right now in the UK, which is that people are desperately struggling. And is it fair that people are afforded these kind of tax breaks when, realistically, people are starving in the UK? No laws have been broken, though. No, I mean, that's the thing about laws, isn't it? It's a little bit like corporate fraud. They don't tend to go to prison, whereas if you shoplift three times at Tesco, you might find yourself incarcerated. <laughs> the fact that it isn't something that's breaking the law, to some degree, doesn't mean it's, in my opinion, morally lawful. And I think that's a distinction that should be made. If it common sense says, why should somebody on £30,000 a year pay in a higher bracket, so to speak, than multimillionaires, it's just logic. That, that isn't fair. Mm -hmm. Especially multi-millionaires married to the second yeah. most powerful man in the government, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Billionaires, I believe. Billionaires. I mean, how can you... Yes, a family, which has Indian family, and it was a father who set up this massive Tesla, company, which yeah. has only just shut down its Russian office. Um, yes, her family's Indian, but she's married to um, the Chancellor of the Exchequer and lives in... London and, and, you know, England, and I don't honestly see how you can exploit this tax loophole with any conscience. If you live in it, you should invest in it. Well, there's no consistency to tax no. rules and, you know, to all the people out we there. We know that, don't we? Well, we know, we know that very well. I mean, I had a conversation um, yesterday uh, about this and, you know, the, the, the Inland Revenue is basically the Department of Thievery and they will do that if they can get away with it. They will do that. And you tell that to the people who are being persecuted for IR35. Suicides. Suicides. The suicides. people who are on loan charges. Yeah. Um, and uh, they are ruthlessly pursued for, for really no reason at all Agreed. and uh, then you get somebody like this so it just is it sort of is a bad taste it leaves mm -hmm. in your mouth really. What would the IR35 and loan charge thing um, that's when the, the, the tax laws were changed and then retrospectively people yeah. are being hounded to death mm -hmm. literally. Which for money they don't the have. Mm. It's like if I were to drive out of here today and do 40 miles an hour 30 miles an hour in the city centre, keeping yeah. within the speed limit. Yes. And then in six years' time, somebody said, Liz, you were doing 30 miles an hour on Deansgate. We've now changed the speed limit on Deansgate to 20 miles an hour, so you owe us this in a fine. It literally is like that. And people, hard-working, self-employed people are dying mm. because of it. Meanwhile, register yourself in a different country mm. and live the life of Riley. Partly in Downing Street. Uh, you were saying that you think this means that, that Rishi Sunak is politically toast. I mean, his ratings have just plummeted, haven't they? Popularity ratings with, with Joe Public, with Tories as well. I think people are very wise and decent and full of common sense. And Emma and I were talking about this earlier. In broadcasting, people watch you or listen to you and suss out whether you are sincere about your speciality topic or you just want to be famous. 
kids, mm. you're a wannabe, you want the attention. And I said, I saw his naked ambition, and, and I think he's coming a cropper because I think people are wising up to it now with his photo opportunities and one rule for you and, and one rule for another. And I'll take away now 1.5% increase in national insurance, waving the carrot of, but before the de next general election, I'm going to cut income tax by a penny. People aren't daft, mm -hmm. are they? So no, I don't think it, I don't think Richie Sunak is a contender. And let's say Richie Sunak. Richie there? Sunak, yeah. <laughs> Freudian Richie, slip there. yeah. <laughs> Richie Sunak is a contender yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't think he's a threat to Boris Johnson mm, for the for the top job, um, whatever his name is. Yeah, um, <laughs> Boris Johnson is the man that in the last election cut through the red wall. Um, and now those constituents, those people who voted for him, that put, that loaned him uh, their vote, are asking questions. This is the Express page two. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, because if you're being hit hard financially by the very government you voted in and you feel that there is a disparity between what you're enduring and what other people who are in more comfortable situations are enduring, you're going to question the whole reasoning behind why you voted. And I think right now, in homes all across Greater Manchester in the UK, in places like Sunderland, etc., these are places where you know everybody expected them to remain red, and then they turned. And the government should be embracing that new opportunity to engage with the working classes. But instead, it's going to be so challenging in the future that people are literally going to be choosing whether to heat the homes or whether to actually be able to eat. Yeah. And that's something that's being posed to these individuals, yeah. isn't it? You see, you can understand these rows politically and um, uh, just aesthetically that go on between number 10 and number 11, mm. because Mr Sunak had the opportunity last week of looking like he cared about these people and the government mm. had the chance of looking like, that. you know, whether it was substantial or not. But the thing is, Emma, it looked like... They didn't care about they the cost of living look, crisis. Even aside from the, if you think about working classes, think about SMEs. You know, three million people were excluded from any financial support whatsoever. Self-employed again. Literally, yeah. not yeah. a penny. Yeah. They've lost their homes. They're, we're looking at the mm -hmm. biggest repossession crisis mm -hmm. that we've known in decades. And the reality mm -hmm. is, they're not people who have, you know, gone out of their way to buy excessive homes. These are individuals with large amounts of equity that are going to get repossessed because they've had their businesses crippled, their lives crippled. Mm. So I don't think they have cared at all about lots of people. To me, it just makes perfect sense that they don't care about the working classes who are struggling anyway. They didn't care about swathes of the population who haven't been able to look after their children, haven't been able to pay their mortgages, certainly haven't been able to keep their businesses going. So this is just more of the same. The, thing, the people who were... We, the, we should be a nation of entrepreneurs. It, right. it creates wealth. People who, lo who were self-employed at the start of the first lockdown and who've lost, lo who lost all the work overnight and have since had to leave the industry that we're in, right. their businesses have gone, you know, they are now, and I know people, are on um, benefits and... Using food banks. 70... So it's, I, I was shocked. It's something like £340 a month or £360 yeah. a month that you get in benefits Universal if you've credit. lost any, everything. Some of these people are finding it hard to go, get work because they can't have the confidence anymore to put themselves out there. So they're trying to survive on that, which is about £80 a week. And Impossible. that's what I was asked the other night, the other day, to pay £75, I mentioned it earlier, to be in the same room as Richie Sunak, yeah. as we don't call him, for, for a dinner. I mean, are these people tone deaf completely? Mm. By the way, I was asked to be, if I'd like to be an MP this week, if I'd like to Who be a candidate. Who are these invitations coming from, one I, 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 Different directions, but I, but I was told it's because, we're, it's because we're looking for northerners to sit yeah. in red wall oh. seats. Well, so you can only like yeah. northerners if you're a northerner. Except the only thing I would say, Elizabeth, <laughs> yeah. is that you say it straight, you tell the truth. Um, you're a real person. Not good in politics. Stay away. That's, that, 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 that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna yeah. work. That I'd, ain't be gonna work. I'd be in trouble straight away, yeah. wouldn't I? You, yeah. When you would never be admitted to cabinet, you would never be admitted to the higher echelons. You would be looked upon as, you know, some freak in the back row that, um, you know, creates creates troubles. And I've spoken to many, many politicians mm. over the years, yeah. and as soon as you break lines, you're out. Your history. 
you mm. know, basically kiss ass yeah. is, is what it's all about. We have some great parties at Chackers at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're talking about the government not caring. They are trying to tackle this cost of li living strategy with this um, energy security, um, sorry, cost of living crisis with this energy security strategy. Daily Mirror covering this page 12, Liz, talking about this plan to go offshore with these wind farms. What are they saying? Yeah, the, 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 oh, we're going to stop. We had a guess earlier. We're going to reverse our policy on shale. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to have new nuclear plants in 2050. Yeah. That's 28 years. What yeah. we're going to do till then? Burn twigs from the mm. woods, gather mm. twigs on our backs. Um, we're going to have uh, wind farms on land, but that's not popular. You know. People don't necessarily want that, although I think some of them are majestic and others are an intrusion. Uh, we are an island, so we've got the, the opportunities for offshore wind farms, tidal. Why have we not got the seven estuary tidal project in place yet? It's all reactive. Nobody's looked ahead to our energy needs. It's all been, you know, let's stop burning fossil fuels, but we haven't really provided ourselves with any alternatives. Scotland's introduced hydroelectric power, um, but we're not ready. We're, we, we, we'll have to just go back. The plain truth is, unless we all start burning our furniture and, and wearing 10 layers in the house, you're gonna, people are, we're going to have to go back to coal, mm -hmm. we're going to have to go back to oil, and we're going to have to go back to North Sea gas as well, because we're just not energy secure. But they're the same. They're not honest, are they? They're, they're not, not being honest. honest. And, you know, the idea of the foreign secretaries in Brussels today saying, hey, why are we all dependent on Russian oil and gas? Yeah. Well, well, I suspect yeah. it's because of government policy, really. Right. That's why yeah. they're dependent on. And they try and pretend, well, we are leading the way. We're going to turn off the taps here and whatever. Mm. As you exactly say, what are we going to do? Burn twigs? Mm. Well, uh, uh, it's like I said before, it's like if you go out for a meal and you're like, oh, I look after my body. I'm just going to have plant-based food tonight. And then somebody, a uh, friend orders a burger and chips and you're leaning over and helping yourself. Because if it's on somebody else's plate, it's not your fault. Uh, it's the same with energy. We, we'll close down our North Sea oil platforms and we'll ship in gas from Norway. And as long as we're not actually harvesting carbon fuel, um, carbon and fossil fuels, we're, well, we can say we're green. Yeah, but we can take it in from Venezuela. Exactly. Mm. We yeah, can go to all the bad yeah. boys of the world mm -hmm. and we can buy it off them. And, and that's okay, because somebody said the other day, if, if this isn't sorted out, the main problem is going to be social unrest. Because if people yeah. find that they've lost their job because their factory hasn't got the gas or the coal or whatever to forge steel and make cars, they're going to find themselves sitting at home with no job, no income, cold, hungry, because there are already shortages, I, 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 I tried buying some sunflower all the other day, but of course there's now a panic and it, the shelves are absolutely empty. empty. empty yeah. There's already petrol um, because of these protesters, which isn't making the news, bit weird. The people protesting at oil refineries around the country. I drove up yesterday, my, ne my local garage, I don't have diesel, but it was out of diesel, allowed to queue for unleaded. So, so I'm not then aware the... of this, I'm not aware of this. Okay, also. right, so I put this out on Twitter. So I was coming up here, I tried to go get yeah. petrol, I had to queue for unleaded. Like, what the hell's going on? So the guy says, oh, we've completely run out of diesel. Oh, a bit bad. I, I'd forgotten that the day before I'd been to my local Tesco for shopping and seen that their petrol station was closed down. I thought they must have a technical problem. Driving up the motorway last night, big electronic signs, no diesel, no HGV fuel, mo uh, the, you know, so-and-so motorway and services. Why? So I sat here in bed last night and I put out, why have I seen this? And people all over the country were texting me, tweeting me, and saying, the same where we are, Liz, there's no uh, diesel. I uh, couldn't get unleaded yesterday. Why? Because there's, there's, uh, these protesters chaining themselves to railings and lorries at petrol, uh, at automotive fuel refineries around the country. And people were saying to me on Twitter, why isn't this being reported? 
But why are they doing it now, just adding to the whole because crisis? They're, because they've got well, first world problem, middle class, retired people, and it's, um, it's ban all oil or something is the protest, and they want to stop the use of oil. So they're stopping people going to work. I mean, I drove up in my car. Now I've mentioned this. I hope people, I hope Stockport, you know, um, isn't going to be raided for petrol or they'll never get home again. Yeah, well. But that people are aware of it because I, I've got, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pass them on to your news team because I've got uh, 50 tweets now saying, we're out of petrol, we're out of diesel where I am. Okay, not that we yeah. want to create any yeah, shortage. Well, I, don't, I don't want to create yeah. panic, but mm -hmm. it's, it's happening now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, these two will be happening again in about 40 <laughs> minutes' time. Uh, Emma, for the moment, Liz, thank you both very much indeed. Anything to say about what the guys are saying? Uh, tweet us at GB News.